you know, have, you know, families, wives or whatever, children. You know, we want to keep that way. You know, we're not, we're growing up, you know, we bypass, you know, the certain things when we were kids, you know, living in the band buildings, squats and so forth. That's all over with. It's time to grow up. Just because we still look like this, we don't want to be judged. Hey, Troy, some people might be confused by the fact that you're black and you're a skinhead. Well, first, I don't consider myself black. I'm an American, first and foremost. My background is mixed. Anyone who was born in this country is mixed. There should be no racial distinctions between white Americans, black Americans, Italian Americans. That in your skinhead end. group, are there blacks and whites together? There's always been blacks and whites together. It's the way it's always been. So well, skin, skin skin you have to understand where, where skinhead came from. It was, uh, it was working class white kids in London that loved um, the West Indian style music. They loved the style of dress. I mean, this is what they were into. So it came from black culture? Well, it, it was an influence of West black Indian culture, black. Yeah. but it came from working class youth in England. And it, it was born out of their desire to intermingle. Lynn? And, why are you a female skinhead? What is it about the skinhead philosophy? Could you take your cap off for a second? Could I ask you to do that so yeah. we could see your hairstyle? It's not, you're not really down to the skin there. But basically, uh, female skinheads have this hairstyle. They have bangs and they have close cropped hair. Yeah, um, frequently it's called a Chelsea on some girls. Um, and they have the fringe. Um, basically, uh, the reason I got involved with the skinhead movement was the music that started me off in general. And I'd like to correct uh, the mention of hardcore and slam dancing. I like some forms of hardcore, but mostly I enjoy the traditional skinhead music, which is ska and oi. Ska and oi. Uh -huh. right. What is ska? <clears throat> ska was um, basically, well. well it was, it was Jamaican uh, music. So um, it was also came from a black right. Right. It, it's, 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 um It later became known as reggae when the Rastafarianism uh, influence became. Lynn, I bet your parents go oi, though, when they look at you. <laughs> it's not only the music. How do your parents react to the, I mean, do you bring, do you have a skinhead boyfriend? Um, well, I did. I dated um, a boy. I'm from Detroit. I just, I'm here, I just moved to New York right. um, in August. I'm going to school at School of Visual Arts. I'm a student here. And yes, I was dating a skinhead. How did your parents react when you brought a skinhead home? They really liked him. As a matter of fact, my dad really enjoyed him because he had a motorcycle. My dad's really into cycles, so they, they really got along well, as a matter of fact. Okay, do you find skinhead boys, is, is the hairstyle attractive to you? Do you look at um, these guys and say, boy, I'd love to run my fingers through your stubble. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, because most women would say, oh, he's got a beautiful head of hair. I mean, you I know, don't teach that, his own. I'm not, you know. I don't think that it's so much an, outwards, an outward appearance that's attractive to a person anyway. I think it's mostly what's on the inside. And they're basically standing for something I believe in. And they're supporting a same group of people that I associate with. So I'm looking at them for their inside value. Not so we, really. And you yourself do not make a real effort to make yourself, uh, let's say, in the terms of what society would say, physically attractive or whatever, you, you, you don't, you don't, that's not a concern for you. She's attractive no. to another skinhead. She's attractive to another skinhead. Yeah, that, that, the hairstyle true. of the bangs with the short cropped yeah, hair, true. that's yeah. attractive to another skinhead. Yeah. All right, here, Time Magazine said, some of these youngsters are obviously disturbed. Others are simply leftover punk rockers eager to shock the adult world. No. Many skinheads no. just no. want to get a rise out of straight grown-ups. They say you do these things and the swastikas and the iron cross and the tattoos. You just want to, you just want to get a rise. You, you want to get attention. So wait, that's wait, wrong because punk itself was totally against. Skinhead is pro. It's for. It's not against. Punk rockers were just out there to make a statement. We're here to, um, we're making a statement too, but we're more of a positive than a negative force. Right, what do you stand for? I stand for a proud America, a united America. No more of this, uh, this racism stuff, because that's what's breaking us down. It isn't, you know, the society. It's, it's this racism with people in general. I mean, come on, if we See, have a war, we're going to have two separate armies, yeah. the black army, the white well, army. We're the Russians are going to wipe us out. Forget about it. So okay. you're anti-communist? Oh, of course, anti-communist. You're, you're patriotic? Yes. Okay. Well, Communi See, as far as, far as uh, the comment about sh uh, trying to shock society or whatever, I consider myself a moderate. You know, I don't try to, like shock anybody. As a matter of fact, I, I wish people would just accept me for the way I am and just treat me exactly. like any how other do you, How do your parents react? Well, my parents, uh, they like the way I look because at least I look clean cut and I don't, you know, and I have a good clean lifestyle. And the boots, you're all wearing the same kind of boots here? 
Yeah. It's traditional can, can we get a shot of those boots? Could you lift them up so we could see them? What, what are these? Doc, Doc Martens. Martin. They're Doc English Martin. work boots. They're steel-tipped, right? Yeah. Some, some are, are, some aren't. Okay, would you use these boots to kick somebody? If we had to. If you had to come down If to you sure. had to. All right, let's, let's talk a bit of, when we come back about what are the situations when you have to. Geraldo, who, was, uh, who you saw uh, on that show earlier, ended up with a broken nose. But he, that also wasn't the last he heard of the racist skinheads who were on the show. They later sent him a note that didn't get very much publicity. But I'll tell you what they said and what they asked for when we continue in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to People Are Talking. This morning we're talking with and about skinheads. We spoke earlier about the incident that took place on Geraldo's show November 3rd that developed into a melee left Geraldo Rivera with a broken nose. But that wasn't the last missive that he received from the skinheads. John Metzger, who is the neo-Nazi skinhead on the show. He's not a skinhead. What? He's, he's not, not a skinhead. Not a skinhead. He's not a skinhead? No, nope. he's a leader of a what? white Aryan resistance. Right, but he's, he's well, they call him a skinhead in the yeah, media. Don't even, don't even consider the neo-Nazi skinheads because they're not. In our opinion, they're not. Yeah, we have a term that for is, that's the They thing. look just like you. No, let me, let me finish the story first, and then we'll talk about how you can tell the difference between a good skinhead and a bad skinhead, okay. whether they like the Wicked Witch of the East okay. or the West and the North and the South. <laughs> okay, so anyway, he sent Geraldo Rivera a bill for $91 to, cost, to cover the cost of two knives seized from him and his bodyguard. And he also wanted Geraldo to pay for the bodyguard's torn shirt. Spokesman for Geraldo said that this represented amazing gall and added, if we can't find those weapons that we took away, we'll be happy to deduct the cost from what it cost to fix Geraldo's nose. Now, before the show began, we had people go through a metal detector and Marcus, one of our security guards, took this from you, right? Well, I carry that as protection. Because I have gotten threatened before. Same here. But I don't well, go. But I mean, I know it's going to be twisted around saying that I go around no, beating up people. No, you speak for yourself. It. I'm not okay. twisting it around. But the only reason I carry it is purely for protection. I would have left it at home, but I forgot to take it out of my bag when I was coming here. I had no intention of bringing it in on the show. Okay, this is pretty heavy protection. You could kill somebody with this. This is a pipe, and it's very heavy in my hand. Yeah, but you got to understand. When I leave home, when I go to work. I carry a bat with me because I've been getting threatened phone calls. We're going to kill you, Jew boy. We're going to do this to your son. See, so the thing you have to understand is... If you appear on a show, we're going to kill you, blah, 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 Who's blah. against you? Who's trying to get you? Nazi like skinheads. Everybody. Everybody. The thing you got to understand is if five people are going to attack me, I'm not going to be able to do anything with just my bare fists. The day before... You know, I could take out a couple of people, but I need something else. Have I mean, you been attacked? I have. Yes. No, I, I have. haven't, but these people... I have. Ah. You've, you've been attacked? Yeah, I was attacked the night before Thanksgiving, Wednesday, the 23rd, I believe, 14th Street and Broadway by a group called Strike Force. They're neo Nazi skinheads neo -Nazi from Staten, Staten, Staten Island. Island. Okay, I know that, Otto, you were attacked by a group of blacks. Yeah. For a while, you became a white supremacist because of that? Well, for one thing, when <coughs> Open Winfrey aired, I'm not sure how long ago it was, but I was coming off a job site where I was framing up a bank in Clifton, more like in Patterson. And uh, I was walking down the street, and these guys see me, and they looked at me and said, that's one of them guys from Oprah. And they jumped me, and I got stabbed. And after that, my racial integrity really went down because I knew a lot of black skinheads who were really cool. And it's just that I was so scared to go around them because I've never really gotten, well, I mean, I gotten shot. But that was in other incidents, not with, uh, not even with, I don't even think it was racial intention on Did that. you ever go back out and then beat up blacks because of what happened no, to you? No, I never just went out and beat up blacks, no. I never got into that part. I mean, I had a lot of fights with people. I wouldn't go out and pick a fight with a black or a Puerto Rican just because of they are that. It's just that when you're around and people get the publicity that all of us are Nazis, then they're going to see me and say, he's white, he's one of them. Okay, let, let me stop you for a moment because I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. So you explain this, Bruce, because you're telling me now, basically, your you're, skinheads are defensive. But in a pre-interview before the show, if you can explain this, could you explain why you said to one of my producers, if we see someone smoking crack, some bum in a park or something, just forget it. I He's dead. I didn't say some bum in the park. You got misinterpreted. I said if we see somebody just standing on a corner, pissing on, excuse me, urinating on a building or doing something like that. You'll beat him up. Well, I, I talk to them. If they get aggressive, then I, yes, it I will. It says here in the pre-interview, you said, well, beat him up, that's for sure. No, you, you got it all mixed up. You, you don't, you just, see, that's another thing, like the media's misinterpreting thing. If I see someone, I'm totally against crack. I did my drugs in my days. I'm growing up. I've stopped it. 
crack. I've seen it kill a lot of my friends. If I see somebody, yes, and I'll say it on the air, smoking crack in a park, I will rip the stem out of their mouth, and I most likely would probably would have given them a beating. How about gays? You said in your interview... I have nothing, no, I have nothing against gay people. You... As long as they don't touch me, then I'll break them up. Okay. <laughs> Didn't you mention, though, that some skinheads went to gay bars, picked up gays, then beat them up and ripped them off? Yeah, but they're a gang of gay skins yeah. by the docks who right. retaliate. And so they're gay the skins. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're gay yeah. skins, yeah. so-called neo-skins, social skins. It goes on. I mean, there's yeah. all different kinds I mean, of groups. We're people, just like anybody else. We're human, you know? just like everybody out mm -hmm. here. You're and no different than us, group, just because we dress different. This kind of person and that kind of person, and it's always going to branch off into other things. But we believe in the traditionalist way of skinhead. We follow the original ways. You know, we, we say the spirit of 69, which is the skinheads who like ska and... Uh, you know, there's a certain style that went along with that. I mean, well, certainly. Remember tricks. what happened with the hippies when Charles Manson uh, was indicted for murder? Everybody said, this is what the hippies are about. No, that's, that's a buzzword. Like, you're using Charles Manson with us. That's wrong. I'm not using with you. I'm talking about the saying? hippies. I'm talking about... Well, listen to my words for a minute and, yeah. and calm down. Uh, what he, I'm saying is that in the 60s, people said Charles Manson represented the hippies when he really had... He was, he was just... He had his own cult. He didn't yeah. represent a, a total culture of hippies or... or <laughs> The thing oh. about that is, okay, before, like, the Haralo show, nobody ever knew really what a skinhead was. No. And then all the media comes out saying skinheads are neo-Nazis. So, of course, that's all they're going to know, yeah. and that's what they're going to believe. Okay. See, so it's up to people like us and television shows to be responsible to get the word out that, look, it's not like that. This is the way it is. Well, that's why you're here, and right. that's why we're giving you a chance me, to do this. Have you seen the clip from Channel 7 News that they did on us? They did a thing with the White Power skinheads from Brooklyn and from Philly and Trenton or whatever. And then our second segment on a Wednesday night, they went down to the White House to try and interview them. They would not want, they did not want to be interviewed. They had my picture, these are all the skinheads now, had my picture hanging on a wall with a rope around my throat from the news day that I was in. Now, I mean, you see what I'm saying? Okay, let me get to some audience questions. Maybe we can clarify some of this for them, too. Yes. I saw you fellas on the Geraldo show, and, you know, you could see the difference between you and the other skinheads. But isn't your basic premise really that you're for the... Uh, middle class, we're the ones that really are the oppressed, the middle class. We're paying for all of the social well, programs and... Well, it, it's, it's... Do you vote? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Are you Republicans? No. Not, Not necessarily, no. I well, mean, you, you... I voted for Dukakis. You voted for Dukakis. But, I voted okay, for Bush. but no, let's get back to... A Dukakis to skinhead. Um, so, yeah. as, far, as far as that, see, there are skinheads... The only problem was he needed a few more of them. <laughs> yeah. See, skinheads yeah. came from basically a working class, uh, proletarian type background. But there are other skinheads who are in working class. They're, some of the parents have, like, more money. But as they have that attitude, you know, of the working class type attitude, uh, where they just do their own thing, you know, and uh, they don't, fit, they don't uh, try to fit in with the mass, you know, Surges. They don't go in with the trends, and they don't go in with uh, all those sort of things. Question out here. Yeah. Uh, what is the purpose of the tattoos, and what do they signify? The heads. Tattoos the for dragons? me are a personal expression. I like the way they look. I think I think of it as an art form. So I'm an artist. Skin heads have tattoos. I, That's I, why I have tattoos. All my tattoos, are basically my own drawings. This is like this tattoo right here. You drew here them on your own arm? No, I have them huh? designed. You didn't draw them on, draw no, them on your own arm. No, I drew them on paper, and then he would make up a stencil. I have tattoos on my head, on my neck. Do you think you'll be a skinhead all your life? When you're 70 years old in the old age home, you'll oh, be yeah. sitting there oh, with, yeah. these ta with these tattoos that are now faded a bit, and you're going to be going, yeah, yeah let me put I mean, my dog some boots on. Right what? now, the cause that I'm at is to stop the hatred. That's the way I feel. Like, we got an organization going, Americans Against Un Americans United Together. We work, we, what we're doing is working with school gangs out on Long Island, trying to get them to stop fighting each other and do something right, to go get the people that are spreading hate from, to other people and try and get that stopped. I'm not saying to beat them up if somebody calls somebody the other form of a right. Negro or something like that. I'm not saying that. But, you know, we're just trying to make peace between each other. How do skinheads, how do skinheads treat their women? How do you treat your women? <laughs> how do you treat your women? Yeah, exactly. so. There's not like a set, you know, you don't have like a set of rules, okay, treat your women like this. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, I treat my women well, for like Well, we know in some cultures, right. and this seems like sort of like a, a subculture, but it in is. some subcultures, in our society, women are not respected. Women are looked upon well, as sexual objects. Well, in some cultures, they are respected. Also, I, I, I can, well, personally, my views on women is I think women are just as equal as men, first exactly. of all. So any skinhead woman is going to be just as equal as any skinhead guy, in my opinion. Well, certain, certainly it doesn't seem to be like a very sexist sort of thing because to no, some degree you downplay all. the sexual differences. Right. You, you know, you don't generally wear 
uh, suggestive clothing or, you know, spend lots of time on makeup or on your hair? Is that, does I that wear, appeal I to you as well, Lynn? I mean, I treat my woman well, we know friends. in some cultures, right. and this seems like sort of like a, a subculture, but it in is. some subcultures in our society, women are not respected. Women are looked upon well, as sexual objects. Well, in some cultures, they are respected. Also, I, I, I can, well, personally, my views on women is I think women are just as equal as men, first exactly. of all. So any skinhead woman is going to be just as equal as any skinhead guy, in my opinion. Well, I, certain, certainly it doesn't seem to be like a very sexist sort of thing because to no, some degree you downplay all. the sexual differences. Right. You, you know, you don't generally wear uh, suggestive clothing or, you know, spend lots of time on makeup or on your hair. Is that, does that I appeal wear, to you as well, Lynn? Lynn, is, does that appeal to you about this? Well, yeah, basically. I mean, a lot of times for me... What's a skinhead mm -hmm. date? I mean, what, <laughs> when you go out on a date, do you slam dance? Do you go someplace and just bump into no, each other? No, we do what you do. We go to dinner. Yeah, yeah I think my girlfriend yeah. yeah. go to dinner. Go to nice dinner. I've been married. I'm still married, but I'm separated. I have a three-year-old son, okay? I live the normal life. I live in Texas. I have my nice little apartment. I work for Continental Airlines. You know, I, I did what you normally do. You know, I just didn't make enough money. I didn't make a lot of money like a lot of people do. Okay. But we lived our life the way we want to live it. I have a telephone call right now. Good morning. You're on the air. Speak out. Hi, my name is Amar. I'm calling from Boston. And I, my question is, are they for drug-free America? Are you against drugs? Yes, I am. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah. Okay, and you were a heroin user at just, one yeah, time. Yeah, but I am. I'm, I'm against drugs. I saw what it did to myself. I've seen what cracks done in my family. My family. I have no tracks on my arms. I'm clean. I've been off, I was off drugs for about a year and a half when I first got married, then I went back to it, then I stopped again because I was living on the streets again in the squats. And I got my, my stuff together. Now I spend time with my kids, so I had to clean myself up. So I guess I kind of jumped up a couple of years. We believe drugs would be the downfall of this country if it's Especially not, crack. It's not stopped. Yeah, I yeah. mean, if you're not in control of your mind, you know, and of yourself, then, you know, that's a problem. Okay, I've got to take a break right here. And I have been told that we have coming into the studio right now someone who represents the other side of the skinhead philosophy, one that may not be the majority philosophy, but one that certainly has been getting a lot of attention. A All right, so we'll hear the difference. A skinhead who says he is a segregationist and that he is a member of a, of a party of skinheads called the White Justice Skinheads who believes in separating the races, and that America should be for whites only. We'll talk about that side of the skinhead faction when we return in just a moment. Don't go away. American skinheads are young men and women, mostly from working class backgrounds. They're united by patriotic pride in their country. They are united by their music. They are united by a sense of personal pride. American skinheads are patriots and believe in upholding the value which makes America unique in the world. The headline says, racist skinheads are a minority. But they are a faction of the skinhead subculture. And joining us right now is one of the members of that skinhead faction. Michael Sokolowski is a member of the White Justice Skinheads. He's for white power, but he says that he is not anti-black. He says that he is a segregationist. What do you mean you're not anti-black? Well, we are not out to oppress any other race. By believing in white power, we believe in positive racism. There are positive. two kinds of racism. Po okay. There's positive and there's negative. Negative is out of stupidity and hate. We don't hate anybody. We are out there to promote our own, just as the many organizations are out there to promote the other races, the um, NAACP, and um, organizations ad infinitum out there to promote the uh, prosperity of the black race. Okay, you, do you go out and bash blacks? We do not go out and bash anybody. If there's any violence that comes to us, and then we take care of that, okay? Okay, uh, th uh, wait a second, I just noticed on your hand, could you lift that up for a second? You got a swastika under your hand there. And what, what is next, the American flag with what uh, American skin? The crucified skinhead. Crucified skinhead, but the... You think this is like a symbol of heroism? The well, Nazi symbol? National socialism is not necessarily against Adolf Hitler was a good America. guy? Well, I'm not so much into Adolf Hitler as well, a national socialist. Well, that's what he said. That was his movement. symbol, you know. Well, that's all good and well. It's also yeah. an ancient Aryan symbol. Uh, national socialist Germany, the entire history has been rewritten by the establishment Zionist press. Okay, and, but, uh, but Adolf Hitler was 
basically. Well, I don't, I'm not here to talk about Adolf Hitler. Well, I really I don't know, but, care about Adolf but, Hitler. But you have, this is Adolf Hitler. That, that's a symbol of Nazi Germany on your hand. No, it isn't. It, 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 it was. You have a swastika, too. It, because I'm a Cherokee Indian. I'm part Cherokee. It's the Indian good luck symbol. But Hitler knew nothing. It's it's well, I didn't come, I did not come here to discuss Adolf Hitler. I'm here to discuss what we are for and what we are against. I know. But Adam Hitler stood for some of the things that you're talking about. A pure, we are here a pure to, country, we are here, uh, a, a pure race. Ultimately, this country was meant to be a pure white country How do you know by that? the founding fathers. By okay? It was written into the Constitution. How, and uh, Abraham Lincoln, who was one of the greatest presidents we ever had, intended to end slavery, which it should have ended. It should have never begun. Okay? And he had a plan to repatriate non-whites out of the country. Because, as he said... Lincoln said that the blacks suffer from the presence of the whites, and the whites suffer from the presence of the blacks. How many, uh, how many, how many, you, how many degrees do you have other. in history? Now. How many degrees do you have in history? History uh, has been rewritten by the establishment, okay? So who do you, whose history I do you read? I am a historical revisionist, all right? Now, you talk about the history of wars. The history of wars is written by the victors. The vanquished have next to nothing to say about history. Well, now, thank God that Adolf Hitler didn't write our history books. Now, I am because here to talk about no what, we are, for, what we are against. And, what and we Dachau. are against. What we are against is the international capitalist communist conspiracy. We are against capitalism and communism. What are you right? for? Cap they are both perversions of free enterprise. What are you we are for? for free enterprise. The American public has been told that that free enterprise is capitalism, and that is not true. America has been told that the republic is now a democracy. That is not true. Okay, this hold is on not a, a democracy, it is a republic. All there right. is a difference. This is a fairly much democratic here, but we had a chance to hear some of your views. He's also, this man is also a skinhead, though, isn't he? Not no, to me. Not no way. You won't my eyes, you. I don't Why know don't the guy, you but get my back eyes, in you. he's a low life. Okay, you know... Wait, wait a second, wait a second. What is this out here? We can't hear you without the microphone. What? You say you're not prejudiced, and then you go and, and, and you talk down what? to him. Who are you? All right, I'm not saying that uh, he's right, or you're right, or you're wrong, and he's wrong, but who are you to say he's well, wrong? Well, if you want to talk about low lowlifes, I have a totally clean record. I've never been arrested for anything. I have good sources which tell me these gentlemen have quite uh, interesting criminal records, and I like to see them deny it. Well, certainly after somebody I'll has... You'll, you'll deny first, it? You have no criminal all, record? Yeah, first of Where, all. Did you, uh, were you a Marine? Or yes, I was. I was a United States Marine. Matter of fact, you know something that's about people like you that get from real sick is why do you shave your head? Why don't you just go put on your little white gown and go burn crosses? Because that's what all you are. The Klan does not burn crosses. Wait, oh, the they don't wait, wait, burn crosses. The Klan, the light of crosses is something? a symbol of something? Christianity, the light of Christ in darkness. Okay, let's okay. not get into the Klan. Okay, first why are you a skinhead? I've been a skinhead for about six, almost six years now. All right. All, All right. right. Skinheads started as a white working yeah. class movement. Wrong. Wrong. They weren't wrong. wrong. There were wrong. no black skinheads. Wrong. They were rude boys back in the 60s. Wrong. All right. Well, what color were they? It doesn't matter what the origins are anyway. This is America. This you is not God. Right. Richard, if you walk, if you walk down the street in 69. It said he was a Nazi skin. Yeah, all of the all of the skins that, this killed is, that's all good on the and streets. Well. That's, that's all, the way it was. That's all well and good. This is and not England in 1969. Took over. I, I'm not even here to talk about skinheads because I don't even want well, to. Well, we are. These, you don't want to talk about skinheads. I don't want to discuss these gentlemen, my friend. I want to. If you want, well, wait a second. This isn't a democracy I don't want here. To hear, this is a talk show, and we developed the forum. We're talking about right. skinheads today. Well, if you don't want to talk about skinheads, well, you can leave, we, or you can be quiet. I am here to talk about what my skinheads are for. But I don't even want to relate to these gentlemen, okay? But you are... You if they want to run off and say they are their kind of skinheads, fine. All the power to them. Right. I like support to my faction. I like and we don't... I want that lady said. Um, the way I feel about this, and you notice I'm not arguing because this is America, it is a free country, and everybody has the right to believe in what they want. He has as much right to believe in what he wants as I have to believe in what I want. I am not going to sit here and call him any names because that's his view. It's only when somebody takes those views and pushes them on somebody else and alienates their right, takes away their right to have their freedom, that's when it's wrong. Okay, do you do, do you have any action? Well, I completely agree with that. Okay. That is completely Does your group take in. any action to intimidate people? Never. Or to, so Never. how do you get your ideas across? Never. Just by talking? We leaflet, we speak, we have uh, get-togethers, we distribute literature. 
uh, we go on the air. You Matt as well. You will not attack somebody unless you are attacked. Is that exactly? Okay. Can I ask a question? Yes. Let me ask you a personal question between me and you. I'm Jewish, okay? If I was walking on your neighborhood by city gardens or anywhere around there, what would you do? Well, uh, we would not attack you. We have other Jewish people there. They come. We don't bother them. You don't like Jews what either, about though, right? you? Okay. What we about feel the there's a special thing about the Jewish people, which uh, definitely what they're doing. There is a conspiracy in the world. You can, you, we can talk about the Council on Foreign Relations. We can talk about the Trilateral Commission all we want, so we're blue in the face. And the average American doesn't even know who these organizations are, but they control the destiny of the United States well, and the world. We've also heard a lot about okay? them from Lyndon LaRouche. We've heard Lyndon about the LaRouche, Trilateral. I'm not here to talk about him. You want to call anybody who says there is a conspiracy a fanatic, okay? Now, what I'm saying is this, talk about you say you know history, history you say you know history more than guys who sit in universities and pour over research, you I know history read, more than people I have who have college degrees, history. I have read it traditional and history, and where do you get your facts from, Mein Kampf? I used to get my facts from, from Encyclopedia Britannica, where do and, you get them and, from and now, the famous historians, now I compare that to what I can read from underground presses, put the two together, and we'll see who's really telling the truth, now, if you want to talk about the powers behind the Council on Foreign Relations well, I don't want to and talk the Trilateral about that right Commission, of course, actually, you don't, I don't want to discuss them. Let me get to talk some about the Kahila. In the audience. Talk yes. about the Kahila, which All actually right. controls All the right. world. Zip it, as Morton would say, yes. <laughs> How come you guys can't get over? Get together and get you know to stop all this fighting. He and doesn't everything. want to stop. We're not out to fight Well, what's them. the problem? We don't what's the point? What's the point? That's what Mesker's voice said. Look what happened. I'm not affiliated with Mesker. First all right. of all, what I'm do you want? With him, I get his literature. We what? don't belong to Mesker's group. We are you totally pay, you independent. You pay for his literature. You send the money. Then you support Certainly. him. That's as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you support him. What's how do you look upon? Mesker? How do you look upon these skinheads? We don't think they're skinheads. We call them boneheads. But if they want to call themselves you're skinheads, the, you're the fine. You're the I, have, skin, I have literature from the 60s, We're not much literature, which shows where okay. skinhead came from, where it came from. And well, certainly he has different ideas about history. So certainly the history of the skinheads is a sm when we're talking he about American history, history, he's got quite a different uh, point the, uh, of view as to what, history, history, what American history is. Authors, but let me ask you a question that most of us would have to deal with. How can we tell you from you when we see you? But he's got a Nazi sign on his arm too. You have a Nazi sign. That's the original Oriental emblem. Is it different from the Nazi swastika? Look at the shape of it. You may know that this gentleman belongs to the JDL, which is the FBI has called one of the major terrorist organizations in America. What does the FBI say about you? The FBI also says we're terrorists. All However, right. this gentleman has been called by FBI, FBI a terrorist because he belongs to the JDO. Okay, let me get some questions from right. the audience. All I want to say is that Same I know thing, how these guys name. are, right? Because when I was uh, 18... Which guys are you talking about? About Otto, because I know Otto. You're talking about what the, the skinhead in the middle. Not right? the guy at the end, cause, because to, to me, I could just shit him out, right? Okay. The guy in the middle, I know him, because when I was about 18 years old, I was in Willowbrook Mall. I got jumped by your kind of skinheads, right? I was by myself. I'm pretty big. Yeah, I took six of you out. You jumped? Did you do anything? Did yeah, yeah. Provo I, I, no, did you do anything to provoke it, or did they? Just... Nah, I was walking <laughs> home while going to my car. You know, and and what they did they say me. to you? They say, "Yo, black boy, what you doing here?" I said, "None of your business." You know, I said, "What y'all want to do? What you want to?" He go says about? they don't attack people. That's unprovoked. bullshit. Well, yes. for every right. black so man you know who's attacked by a white in this country, you'll up. find you know ten blacks who are attacked by whites. Go home and read your comic books again. Blacks are blacks. So you know what they did? They jumped me, right? So I, you know, I ain't gonna stand there and take no, you know, mess. So I took six of them out, but, you know, it was more than six. So, with the, I, you know, I went back to Funny Games. I got nappy. He knows what I'm talking about. His friends, who are also skinheads, they came back and they fought against them. So what do you what do, do when you boys Wait a second. Too. As a black man who knows that these kind of skinheads are out there, what do you do when you see a skinhead coming? I don't, I, you know, I walk, I walk, and I just don't say nothing to them, you know? They say hi, I say hi. But you hi. can't tell who's a, who's a good one and who's a bad one. Oh, you can tell. How can you tell? Because if you're a black man and you're walking by a skinhead, and he says, yo, this nigga, and he hits you, then you know he's a bad one. Yeah. <laughs> you know it. You know it. Well, I suppose, I suppose then. <laughs> I suppose then. The litmus if this test for skinhead. People walking we'll be down back in just a moment. Stay with us. <laughs> Boxes for um, 
The skinhead from the racist organization. Yeah, it, in his simple way of thinking, he believes that this country should be pure and white. Now, what are we supposed to do with all the black and Hispanics and, you know, every well, other race this around? Not Where are we supposed now, to put these people? And we're not concerned with making it purely white anymore right now. So what, what we're concerned is preserving our own heritage, our own land, and putting an end to forced integration because that's what integration has for the past 20 30 years been forced by government agencies now so what we are well, not well, wait a second wait, wait, wait a second wait a second they can't they can't hear you watch that what sticker come on you the superior race i know stand right now me and sir no sit down sir would you please sit down you hear me a dead man all right well i'll tell you one thing by the You're way gonna... abraham lincoln was a white supremacist if all you right. read what he oh. said was a white hold up for a second sir please sit down Six million I'm going to ask you to be shot sir, right there. Sir, I'm going to ask you to sit down, and I'm going to ask a security guard to, to leave you if, you if you have another outburst, okay? Because uh, this is not between you and him. This is between you and me. Now, okay? Look at me. All right? You got what I said? Okay. Why do people think that if you say white power, you are out to oppress other races? Plenty of you want to know something, buddy? Say because this country power. isn't about white power. This is about, this country is about Indian uh, power, Chinese power, black power, and all different people working together. Uh, and right. no matter what you there say, you are. You are a hypocrite. You are a hypocrite. You, you have black some... power. Hey, I think black power is fine. Buddy, you have not... some fantasy in your head about what this country's about. I don't believe about. what you're saying. There were, there you're were black people black who power, worked their butts off, who gave fine, their lives to and protect and, and build American this country. Power, white power is no good. That before is hypocrisy. You were even, before you, your hypocrisy. Before you first grew the first hair on your skinny head. I cannot head. believe it. I think black power is great. It doesn't, see, you don't understand where, where I'm coming from. I think what is good for the black people, Louis Farrakhan, people like that, are fine. They're great. They're good for the black people. They are, they are okay. good America for the black people. All right, That's dude. all that matters. All right. The black people should only care about what is good for them. But okay? It was we the care power about what of all of us working well. together. I think it's that great to see. Country. I think it's great and to see black people in here and said and say that one group is built great the country to see people and one group black people with black power shirts. I think black power is great for the race. Okay, you think he's such a good I don't man. agree the with guy, him entirely. The guy sells out Madison Square Garden. All I don't, I, I don't agree with him entirely. All right, let me read about this let, guy. He makes a lot of good points. Let's I don't return, agree with him entirely. Hold on Bob one second. Let's, right. return to the whole, guy, let's return to the whole issue of skinheads and skinhead philosophy in general. Somebody okay. back up here. I'm not going to go back up there. But he had a question about going to work. When you go to work, do your employers look at you and say, I'm well, well my, my employer likes me. He, he gives me time off to come to come on television shows because he supports what I stand for. But don't for. you think that an employer might say, you represent the company, and I want a more traditional look? My nickname look. was Skin, and everybody used to look at me and say, yeah, he's one of them. And people used to love it. They used to talk to me all the time, ask me questions. But the thing is, he, see, he knows about our philosophy, and he knows how we feel about working hard. And he actually came up to me one day and said, look, I understand you guys are believing working hard. Do you think any more of your friends would want to work for my company? Exactly. Okay? So... You know, if pe more people had that attitude, it'd be a lot better. Okay. Obviously, I have no Hold problem with my employer because I'm here today. I work people where I work with, I work with black people. They have complete respect for me. I have complete respect for them. There is no animosity whatsoever, which is the way it should be. Okay? okay. You, make the big, you make a big stink about one black man being jumped by whites. For every black man who is being jumped by a white man, there are ten whites being jumped All by right. blacks. I, I mean, keep that it is down. It is. Keep, keep now, it down. And this man, it wasn't a matter of that. It was a man who was jumped by members of an organization like yours. Oh, it, and, and of course the JDL jumps no one It was, no one it was ever. a codified. Makes no threats. Slashes nobody's tires there. Yeah, but Buddy. His friends helped me out to beat up your All right, hold on well, for a second. I don't think Let's if take I a saw break you and cool beat up by some white people, here. We'll I don't think I would help them out. Welcome back to People Are Talking. Len, I, I, I know it's been hard for you on the show to get a word in edgewise, and uh, we talked about sexism before, and I hope that we're not guilty of it in terms of giving you a voice. Uh, as a female skinhead, what, what, what is your reaction to what's gone on here today and what we've talked about? Well, um, I'd like to state the reason, the real reason that, you know, me and Marcus and some of these people came here today. Um, we really wanted to stress our organization that we've started or I should say that Marcus has started. Okay, the organization is, I'm running out of time. And, and it's sharp. It's Skinheads Against Racial Prejudice. Basically, it's, it's an organization to educate people about what we're about because of the negative media and because of the one-sidedness. And they never presented our side. So that's why we started 
this organization, the Skinheads Against Racial Prejudice, because that's not what we believe in. And we have talked a bit about that before. Uh, uh, Troy, you have an organization yeah, as well? Yeah, my group, the National Skinner Firm. I mean, we're basically for skins, skin standing for the skinners, but we want to make it known. We are not the people you have to worry about. You look at the way we look, and you say, okay, these people are no good. But the people you have to worry about, your uncles, your children, who, they are the, they're, they're the ones that are spreading racism, not us. I mean, we're, I mean we, there's a lot of us, but we're small. It's the people that you don't look at, the people, the suits and ties, yeah, I mean, those, those are the ones you have to watch out for. There are problem us. people in every group. There, there, you know, there are racists in doctors, there are racist lawyers, there are racist nurses, politicians, politicians no, no, no. everything. Okay. You can't judge a person by There, a is, there is also people skin... People are not racists. What? Not you're not a racist? I'm saying that the, you call, you're, you're going to, of course, say that the Jewish people are not racist. That's totally bogus. I'm, I, would, I don't make generalizations, uh, stupid generalizations um, like that. Excuse, no. excuse me. I'm talking about talk, talk usually this band based over on here. facts. Give me a right, break for a second right, here. Right. Yeah. There is a band here called Agnostic uh, Front that plays a, a music that's very popular <laughs> with the skinheads. What is the music about? How is it different from other music? Well, the thing is, the music, it's like, um, it's very powerful. It's got a lot of anger in it. You know, what are you a, angry about? Just. What any, anyone else is angry about, you know? Frustration in life, but you, you vent it through the music. Now, take, for instance, Troy. I've known him for a lot of years. And I know a lot of skinheads that are just music lovers, you know? They try, they try not to mix the politics. Then you get someone like him. I don't even know if he's into music, but, you know, he's okay. very much into politics. But wait a second. You say the music is filled with a lot of anger. I mean, rock and roll has always been a, a music of protest, a rebellion. Is there a special anger that, uh, that is expressed in the skinhead music? I think there's a special kind of anger that this fellow has over here. What he's doing is he's hiding behind a wall of hate. He's looking to an outside hate organization to give himself power because he feels impotent inside, and he's using race as a scapegoat for his own impotence. Okay, but some of your music also seems um, fairly down. It has a, seems to have a, the lyrics seem fairly negative from the lyrics that I read. Is, is there hope in the skinhead movement? There's a lot of hope. It's not negative lyrics. It's just it's been looked upon the wrong way. It's pro-American lyrics talking about how we should have liberty and justice for all. You know, there should be no race. Meaning we should live up to our ideals. Right. We should live up to American flag. America you know? stands for, the American flag stands for freedom and justice. America is the melting pot. It stands for freedom and justice for every race. That's right. right. I have a telephone call right now, very quickly. Good morning. Good morning. You're people are talking. Hi, I'm calling from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, sure. and the media is giving the image that all skinheads are bad. Well, we're not I doing want... that today here. <laughs> I know. I want to know what the good skinheads are going to do to change our perception of that. Okay, what, are, what are the good skinheads have over their organizations sure. they have talked about, but in terms of, in terms of doing, uh, turning the words into actions, what are you going to do in terms of actions? Sometimes. We are, we are, we are acting. We're, being, we're on television right now talking to people to educate them. We go out on the street, we hand out literature to educate them. Which is exactly what my faction, White Justice Skinheads, does. Uh, you're Same right. Thing. Gonna, we don't go out there to beat up anybody. And you know what I know something? You believe what the media tells you? That's completely bogus. That may, sorry. That, might, uh, that may be true. And, and you know I'll tell you, I've heard about skinheads being arrested across the country for crimes. And I've asked okay. the people from the TV stations, are they white power or not? They claim up immediately because they don't want to tell okay. you that the majority of the skin has I'm anti white greater for power the problems. than your so called white power. That's the power of capitalism, which says we have to go to a commercial. So uh, we will take a break right now. But uh, thank you all for coming down here today. And certainly, we live in a country that is not only a melting pot of cultures and ethnic backgrounds and races, but it's also a melting pot of ideas. And all of these groups have a right to disseminate their literature. If you believe in the goodness of heart, and the wellness of mind of the American people, you will believe.